So today is one of those days where I really am wondering, how did I get myself into this situation? About two weeks ago, our ducks got attacked by a mink. It broke into the duck house and killed one duck and injured several of them. Uh, I tried my best to secure it and I tried to trap it, but the next night it broke in again. Um, I know all of this is actually really my fault um, that the mink got in and did that. The mink is simply following its predator instinct and doing what it was meant to do, which is find and kill prey. I mean, generally speaking, when you think about the ecology of this place, mink do a lot of good. I mean, they keep the rodent populations in check and you know their predation helps make sure that things are in balance. But at the same time, they are a problem and I can't have them attacking my birds. <laughs> I've been trying to catch them now for about two weeks and it's been a steady round of using live traps. I've got both the larger and smaller traps. I've been setting three or four of them a night. I've caught skunk, I've caught possum, and even this morning I went out to check on the ducks and check the traps and I found a large old raccoon hanging out inside of it feasting on an old duck carcass. I ended up taking that raccoon and releasing him on the backside of our property. Again, as long as the animal's not trying to attack my animals and is staying out further away from the duck house, I'm, I'm much more likely to be sort of a live and let live mindset. But based on the advice from a lot of you guys out there who are watching these videos, I, uh, I've decided to step up my game. I got uh, Conibear 110 traps. So the Conibear is this uh, sort of kill trap. I got a couple of these from somebody who uh, really asked to, to stay nameless. I think they're called body grip traps. I got to admit, I've never tried to do something like this before. I had a very suburban upbringing. My father, my family members, they never hunted. So learning all of this is kind of just, it's unusual. I, I've, I've never had to really go into it. But at the same time, I'm seeing it as a necessary part of being a farmer and trying to protect my animals. So if you found this video and are watching this, please know I am by no means an expert. I'm simply trying to capture my personal experience with this. This should not be construed as a how-to. I myself have just watched a bunch of YouTube videos to learn how to try to even set one of these traps. And I gotta admit, I'm kind of terrified to try it out for the first time right here, right now. <laughs> that was terrifying. You put this in like a hole or you put it in a stream or something and the animal supposedly is gonna go up to the trigger, go up to the trigger. <laughs> These jaws sort of clamp down and trap them. I should probably test this thing out before I try to set these out in the wild. Okay, I'm Mr. Mink and I'm gonna go in here. Oh. That looks pretty ruthless. Um, should be a quick, clean kill. I've got uh, some bait here. Uh, let's go trap some mink. Come on, Pablo, let's go. 
Come on, Pablo. I brought the barn cats in. Uh, they cannot stay outside tonight. Let's go, Lil. Come on. Bringing the barn cats indoors. Look, I can't let those barn cats roam around there. They could smell the sardines, wander over, and I could easily see one of these traps just Come killing on. Lil. Let's go, let's go. So they're sleeping inside. They're sleeping in the basement tonight. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Hang on, hang on. Nobody's going in the house. You're just going in the basement. Excuse me, Mr. Pablo. Where are you, Lil? Come on. All right, enjoy the basement tonight, guys. Bubble ducks need to go inside, too. Come on. Bubble ducks inside. Let's go. Come on. In the house you go. Come on. Into the puddle duck house. Come on. Now, one note for you guys, you probably should check with your local wildlife officials about whether or not this is okay. Um, I actually called the Vermont wildlife folks and asked if I could trap this mink and try to kill this mink. They said it was okay because it's attacked some of my ducks and I've been able to document that. Uh, the woman I spoke to, she said, nope, it's totally cool. It's considered a nuisance animal. You can do what you need to do. And so that's why I'm doing this, which is what I need to do. But, you know, look, those rules vary from state to state. I think these traps are even illegal in some places. Um, so you really have to check on your local rules if you're gonna do something like this. So now my plan for the traps was, usually you set these traps like in a hole or a box somehow. You want the animal to try to burrow into it and like go head first into it. And so I knew that there were some old cinder blocks over by the spot that I've seen the mink before. And so I dug those up and I used them as the base of my traps. One trap I decided to try by just laying the cinder block flat. And then I put some bait inside the cinder block and I took each of the traps and set it on one of the holes within the cinder block. Um, I made sure to drip a little bit of the sardine water around the block. There's these like little chains and like loops that you need to use to secure the trap in case like the animal goes flopping around or tries to run off or, or whatever um, and you don't want it to just disappear and be in, injured and suffer. I, uh, I took those loops, I put ground staples in and then I put them underneath the cinder block so they were really solid. It, it would take, you know, like a bear could probably get it out but most other animals probably couldn't. Maybe a coyote, I don't know. That is my one fear with all of this. I'm worried that I'm going to catch a coyote or a raccoon or something that will get injured by this trap, but not actually killed by the trap. So I am a little afraid of that. For the second two traps, I decided to stand the cinder block upright and make it like a, a, a little tunnel. And so I put the can of sardines inside the middle of it. And then I took one trap, set it on one side. And then I took another trap and set it on the other side. And so I figured that the, the, the mink could go from either side to try to get in and it would clamp down on them and catch them. I happened to have a fifth and extra trap. And so what I did with that one is I actually went to one of the holes that was created by the cinder blocks. I stuck a little bit more sardine down at the bottom of that, buried the trap just a little bit and set it so that it could be another thing that it could try to plunge into. It's crazy being over by this part of the stream because I can see just the remnants of old dead ducks. I've been using dead ducks as bait. Still hasn't worked much. The sardines have also attracted attention, but the mink has just either been too slick to get trapped in the, the live trap, or it's been other animals that have set off the live trap and the mink wasn't able to do anything. So I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but we'll let the evening happen and uh, see what it looks like first thing tomorrow. Come on, cats. Freedom. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on.
but I've got nothing. It's been four days since I first put these traps out there. I've moved them around a couple of times. I've had the trail camera going, and frankly, the only thing I've seen on the trail camera has been I don't know. I just don't think I'm getting the mink. I am doing my best here, but I'm just not having much luck. I think I'm gonna call a pause to the trapping activity right now because I don't like having to keep the cats inside and I don't know, I keep getting worried that I'm gonna be more likely to snag an innocent raccoon or something. The only other thing I'm really thinking about doing right now is trying to put these guys in the stream itself and potentially do sort of an underwater trapping situation, which you know, pretty much only means I'm gonna catch the mink or a muskrat. And so uh, that's, I guess, where I'm going with this whole experiment. If you guys have advice, leave it for me down in the comments. I really appreciate all the help I've received so far. I'm just gonna focus my efforts on trying to build a better duck house now. I haven't had any issues since I put out the electric netting, and so I'm gonna keep banking on that. Um, and yeah, so there we go.